This conservation area in the town of Carlisle, Massachusetts, provides excellent habitat for over 20 species of solitary wasps. One of the more common residents is the classic sand wasp, Bembex americana. Early in the flight period, males are seen mating with females. The yellowish bands on the male turn bluish with age. Females seem undeterred by the attention of males as they go about their business of burrow excavation. Prominent tarsal spines or rakes on the female's front tarsi assist her in her digging efforts. Here Bembex brings a stiletto fly to the entrance of her burrow. Americana preys on a diversity of flies including horse and deer flies. It is hard not to feel both sympathy and admiration for these industrious insects as they deal with the almost constant vagaries of their work. This and several other species of Bembex are progressive provisioners, feeding their young on an as-needed basis, not unlike songbirds. Direct caring for young is unusual among solitary wasps and represents a more advanced evolutionary stage of nesting behavior. Because Bembex americana employs a temporary closure to her burrow while hunting, she must undo this work each time she returns with prey. Her tactic likely reduces predation and to the human eye renders the sight nearly invisible. While the wasp seemingly has little trouble refinding the precise location of her nest and developing young, it is no small feat of navigation. Many naturalists revisit special areas year after year. Often their quarry includes a perennial colony of cicada killers. These big noisy wasps are hard to overlook even for those with no interest in the natural world. While this wasp dramatic common name is certainly appropriate, it may also tend to reinforce the public's aversion to wasps in general. This is unfortunate as these gentle giants are an ideal subject for the would-be wasp watcher. At the beginning of their flight period in midsummer, the activity around the colony is frenetic. Aggregations of emergent males establish lek-like territories where they suspect females will emerge. The mating game is at times a no-holds-barred free-for-all as males seek to pass on their genes. However, when a single pair breaks away from the orgies, the business of reproduction seems somewhat more genteel. Nectar provides sustenance for adult cicada killers. But for the males, their short, happy life is soon over. The wasp watchers' opportunities, however, have just begun as females commence their labors. Observing the mechanics and strategies of excavation alone may provide hours of enjoyment for the patient naturalist. The apparently simple task of digging a hole is transformed into a demonstration of finely tuned evolutionary adaptations, suffused with both grace and beauty.
Of course, the wasp is not concerned with aesthetics, but rather with the business of provisioning her nest. For the huntress, the cicadas themselves are no easy load. Often, she must combine a series of drags over the ground with short flights to get back to her burrow. The entire process of finding, capturing, and subduing the prey is seldom observed, but for the cicada killer, it is all part of her day's work. Certain females make attempts to requisition the prey of her sisters, and even to evict rightful owners from their burrows. Reflection on their labors is a luxury reserved for the watchers, but her labors gradually take a toll, and wings become frayed or limbs injured. Ultimately, the final chapter is written for each cicada killer wasp and the degree of her success or failure will be measured with next year's flight.